I'm Mary in Abinett Mac. Uh, I was born in Colleton County, South Carolina. We moved here in to St. Helena Island in 1949. Uh, my mother, after my after my father's death, my mother, my father was a World War One veteran, which gave my mother civil service status, and she had eight under age children and she needed to get a job because we owned a farm, a tobacco farm in South Carolina. She couldn't do, manage that with eight minor children. So she moved to Beaufort and got a job, a civil service position in housekeeping at the Naval Hospital in Port Royal. That's what brought us here. St. Helena Island is a traditionally African-American community. So my biggest issue, or the biggest issue I encountered was that I didn't look like most of my classmates because of my complexion and, uh, and hair. And it took a while before the children got accustomed to me. And, uh, and then after a short, you know, fairly short period of time, uh, it all just disappeared. And, uh, you know, people treated me like everybody else. I mean, I used to wear my hair parted in the center with two braids hanging down. And my scalp, they used to laugh at my scalp most of all. So I started wearing my hair differently. I didn't part my hair. Uh, but it, it, it passed, you know. Uh, I'm fairly outgoing. Uh, and when I think back, uh, I was just excited about everything. And, uh, and I think that just kind of made the transition easy. I have an idolatry relationship with Penn School and Penn Center. I absolutely loved it. I came from a little uh, rural uh, two-room uh, uh, elementary school. It was it was really uh, one uh, first through eighth grade uh, that my mother had taught at uh, before I was born. Uh, it was in rural island in South Carolina in Colleton County. And to come to Penn with uh, with a, a school with multiple uh, buildings that was like uh, K through 12 uh, with uh, shop and home ec and all just an assortment of things that uh, I'd never dreamed about before. Uh, it was a it was a really uh, heady uh, kind of uh, situation. It was it was a wonderful experience. Probably <clears throat> not math, that's for sure. But <laughs> history and English and and then when uh, I got into home ec, I absolutely loved home economics because uh, I'm from a long line of spinners, weavers, sewers, and dyers. And, uh, and we've always been uh, people that created uh, clothing. And uh, so I loved home economics. I loved the machines and that kind of thing. Um, Art is uh, art puts meaning in my life. I, I actually, I don't, I, I paint, but I don't really see myself as an artist as much as I see myself as an art collector. I collect art. When, uh, well, what really inspired me to uh, paint and to love art. When uh, I got married, moved to New York and got married, <clears throat> and shortly after I mo moved there, my husband took me to an open art exhibit in Greenwich Village, and I thought it was the most exciting thing I had ever seen in my life. And I said, this is me. 
I like art. I love art. And uh, that day, uh, I bought my first painting and a French cookbook. It was like, that was pretty hefty stuff. It was, you know, being from St. Helena Island, uh, walking around in Greenwich Village. And um, I started to paint, and I wouldn't let people see my paintings, and I wouldn't, uh, I would just paint when no one was around and, and just put them away. And then one day I showed one to someone and they wanted to buy it. And uh, so it kind of branched out from there. Uh, and then uh, I, start, I started collecting art and uh, people would come to my home and you know say oh you know I really like that you know where'd you get that would you want you know would you consider selling that so I started selling not only my art but other art and uh, that's after I'd moved back here uh, and it uh, it grew into a business. First, it was I called it special things, and had uh, uh, coerced the lady to letting me have space in her gallery to operate my own little business. And then uh, later, uh, I became owner of that business, and uh, the Red Piano to Art Gallery and operated it for like 30 some years, I guess. I, uh, I'm basically, I'm a registered nurse by profession and I was a healthcare executive. Uh, and when at some point I realized if I wanted my business to survive, I was going to have to, I needed to operate it myself. So I retired and ran my business until uh, like three years ago, mm -hmm. I closed. Yeah, it's uh, it was a really exciting period. Uh, I don't know how many works of art I have, but uh, both of my granddaughters and uh, and my son and his wife have at least as much art as I have, and probably my niece Mary Days has uh, about that much also. So I'm, I've collected a lot of art in my life. <laughs> and met wonderful artists, mm -hmm. yeah. What would you say would be your favorite piece of art that you've collected? <laughs> I know um, that's probably hard. It <laughs> really is. Uh, I mean, I am I really am pleased to have my Jonathan Greens because he's such a, a, an accomplished, established, recognized, uh, wonderful person and artist and I have let's see I'm just reading five. Mm -hmm. I think I have like five Jonathan Green uh, originals. Mm. Yeah. And uh and I have a, a a really nice collection of Floyd Gordon's work. He's an Orangeburg, South Carolina artist. And I have I have art well within the and within my family, we probably have something by every artist that was ever represented in the Red Piano to Art Gallery. Yeah. I sometimes think that uh, we should really do uh, a book called the Mac Collection. <laughs> I didn't recognize it myself for a while and then one night I was painting something and I looked at it and I whispered to myself, you paint women in water. I primarily paint women and and water scenes. I mean, I do some other stuff, but that's uh, pretty much the crux of my or the backbone of my uh, of my work. Would you say that it's because you have a special relationship with water? I absolutely love. I if I could live anywhere. St. Helena Island is where I would want to live. So I love being in this place and I, I love the water, uh, just the everything about it.
Yeah, I have like an idolatry relationship with this place. <laughs> I like, I like, I guess I like just about everything about it, but I especially like uh, the water. And this is the first place in this country that education came and an educational institution was established for formerly enslaved African-Americans, formerly, formerly, well, for African-American people generally, not just formerly enslaved. I mean, a, an institution just for that. Penn School. Yeah, my, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother was, uh, her ancestors came out of Beaufort District. Beaufort covered a larger geographical area than it does now because it's been subdivided into other counties. But this was where her, uh, my ancestors came from originally on my maternal side. It was actually my paternal, it was my, my paternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Sam Doyle's work. I went to school with his children. I sat next to his son in the second, in the seventh grade. And we had, it was the beginning of the school year and everybody had to bring something from the community to, uh, to, to class. And there were like 32 students in the class. I don't remember what I brought. The only thing that I remember was what Sam Doyle Jr. brought. He brought a painting by his father. And I looked at it and I said, oh, Chubby, you didn't do that. And he said, no, my daddy did it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my introduction to Sam Doyle's work. Yeah. Actually, my, uh, my mother uh, was the supervisor at the laundry on Paris Island the Marine Corps base, and Mr. Doyle worked with, uh, with my mother there. Yeah. Because I've read something about when he used to work on Paris Island. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Did you ever get a chance to um, hear a lot of stories <laughs> of people who have been on the island for a while saying they used to be spooked to walk past his house with all of his artwork and everything out there? Well, when when I was in school, like, and I guess in the, in the seventh grade, when we used, the bus picked us up, you know, they had residential students, but also uh, students from the community. And uh, the school bus drove by his house every day. And he had all of these paintings lined up around his house and the fence. I mean, it, would, it was like an outdoor museum. And we used to laugh at it and think, boy, that's art. And now, you know, like, it was like, you know, I hope nobody ever gives me one of those. And now it's, boy, do I wish I could afford one of those. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people had the same sentiment. <laughs> I sold and... Um, and the woman that started the Red Piano Two Art Gallery over here, Lou Ann LaRoche, uh, was a major, or is a major collector of Sam Doyle's work. And uh, a, a lot of his work sold here. And I wish so, you know, like now I, but it's all, you know, like where you are at a particular time. Yeah, if I could have afforded his work even then, I mean, now it's like, I can't even think about it. Yeah. 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 Um, when Miss um, Edith Sumter, used, where, the, where the Foolish Frog restaurant is now, used to have an Ease Novelty store there. And she did alterations and sole fabric and that kind of thing. And I went in there one day, and the staff from Daughters of the Dust, some of them were in there, and they were wanting people 
they were talking about people doing costumes and what whatnot. And I said, oh, my husband can do that. And uh, my husband, Thomas Mack Sr., ended up doing some of the costumes for, for Daughters of the Dust. And uh, we invited, we in, ended up uh, inviting them all to dinner here at the house. And uh, he made gumbo, He's, he was an excellent, uh, excellent cook and uh, and we got an opportunity to meet them and talk with them and share an evening. Did you know at the time how monumental Daughters of the Dust would have been? No, uh, I was impressed but I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I was impressed with the fact that they were shooting a film here and you know that kind of thing. Well, and uh, what I, I really sincerely hope is that people, that islanders, hold on to their land. Uh, there's a joke I've heard that people say, when the last St. Helen Island person leave the island, please turn out the light. Uh, and that's not a, a philosophy that I ascribe to. Yeah. I... Uh, my uh, family take great pride in their heritage and being landowners here on St. Helena Island. Have you seen it change over the years? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are a, a lot of changes, um, especially, uh, well, even in the, in the residence uh, style. Uh, I think of when I look around now, there are so few homes here that older homes that uh, that I grew up with, like from my childhood. Uh, uh, there are communities, gated communities, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, where people, local indigenous people, used to live. Uh, and people, uh, I've noticed that people now are not so selective about uh, where they settle. as They'll settle anywhere that they can find an acre of land to buy. I think about it. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not. I mean, I, I think I. I suspect that most people think about it to some extent or another. Uh, uh, but I worry about flooding, uh, that kind of thing. I live on the creek that is behind me. Uh, every time we have a high tide, I look out to see where, you know, how, how, how far it has come up. We had the high tide recently, and I guess it, the high tide, uh, the, made this impact didn't hit on high tide, so we didn't get a lot of water. But I've had, uh, I live on a two acre lot, and I've seen water come up almost to my lawn, yeah. Uh, I guess hold on to your land and uh, there's only so much that you can do to control nature uh, and I don't know that floodgates or that kind of thing but uh, just environmental things that would in impact flooding uh, it's probably above my pay grade to say what they are, but but there are people out there that are aware, and we need to all become educated around changes that we need to make to uh, to uh, try to stabilize the environment as much as possible. As I said earlier, mostly I 
paint women in water. And uh, if we destroy the the environment, we're no we're no longer going to have those images available to us, nor that lifestyle that's portrayed. I mean, uh, yeah. Boating, fishing, uh, casting. Uh, if you destroy it, you know, it, you know, it's over. So uh, it's like a major, uh, colossal uh, change. It's not just the current lifestyle, but it, it will impact all future generations. As I mentioned before, one of my greatest life's pleasures is having an opportunity to be a citizen in this community.